Good morning and welcome to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Our focus this morning is on local events that are happening in the city of Milwaukee that you can take part in. My first guest serves as the older woman of Milwaukee's 6th District. She grew up in one of Wisconsin's most prominent political families and has served as older woman since 2008. August 6th through the 13th marks the 4th Annual Bronzeville Week and here to tell us all about that and a whole lot more is Milwaukee's 6th District Alderwoman Malele A. Coggs. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here. And as I stated, we're coming up on Bronzeville Week, which celebrates history, art, commerce, community, and culture, which is all rooted in a rich urban tradition. Tell us more about Bronzeville and why it's so important for everybody to take part. You know, in the mid uh, 1900s, we had a vibrant um, African American uh, area for commerce, entertainment. Celebrities used to be over there and everything, um, but with the highway coming through I-43, um, it dispersed a lot of the businesses and um, entertainment mm -hmm. that existed over there. In 2005, the city of Milwaukee created legislation to attempt to recreate Bronzeville, uh, Milwaukee's African American Arts, Cultural, and Entertainment District. So since I was elected in 2008, I worked diligently along with uh, several great people in the community to help bring uh, a new Bronzeville mm -hmm. um, to the area. And, uh, a few years ago, three years ago to be exact, we created uh, something called Bronzeville Week, an opportunity to highlight uh, the great businesses and entertainment um, in the area and throughout the city. And uh, it's eight days full of great activities within the Bronzeville area. All right, and a rich history indeed uh, mm -hmm. Bronzeville has. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, it was once a thriving African-American community and history does tell us that it systematically was destroyed by the highway being built right between the middle of Bronzeville. Mm -hmm. And coming up on August 6th, you've got the Bronzeville Cultural and Arts Festival. A lot of people look forward to this each and every year. Definitely. We started as just one block on North Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, and the last two years, we we take up North Avenue from King Drive uh, to 7th Street. And this year, we've partnered with the United Way um, and some great people there, Tonda Thompson, uh, for the Harambe, um, a run walk, a 5K okay. run walk. This will be the first time to help address some of the um, infant mortality and create awareness um, about it. So we have tons of people participating in the run walk um, as well, and they'll end up at the festival. Uh, right there on North Avenue. That's wonderful. And the heart of the original Bronzeville ran along Walnut Street between King Drive and 12th Street. And the highest concentration of African American owned businesses was actually between 6th and 9th Streets back in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look back, there are a lot of photos and a lot of history that exists today that really gives everybody an opportunity to get a feel for how vibrant that area was. What do you think when you see those photos? I think of what's possible today. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's difficult to see the path to the future, but sometimes if you reflect on the past, it kind of gives you that motivation to attempt to not only recreate, but mm -hmm. even build better. Absolutely, and you did mention that your office, along with other people in the community, are working hard to revitalize uh, the redevelopment plan of the 21st century Bronzeville. What do you envision uh, for Bronzeville in the 21st century? I definitely see um, an opportunity to highlight so much of the talent that we have here mm -hmm. in every level of arts, visual arts, musical arts, and everything. But also, um, you know, arts alone can't survive. So it needs to be uh, more density mm -hmm. over there. So I see, you know, more apartments and that whole kind of thing, more home ownership. Um, but I also see mixed uses, meaning it might be a lounge downstairs, but upstairs there are offices. Mm -hmm. um, I know in the Bronzeville of old, my uncle T.W. had his law offices. And even now, if you go down Water Street or Brady Street, yes, we know the clubs and restaurants, but there are also boutiques and hardware stores. And if you look up, there are realty companies and mm -hmm. offices um, and apartments because those business people have to eat lunch somewhere. Those uh, people who live there have to shop somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's really that combination of both commercial businesses and density of people through office space and residences that we are attempting to create with that touch of 
the African American community and experience. All right, and so uh, with the summer months, you've had what's called, uh, well, I should say hashtag Bronzeville Summer mm -hmm. Series. So talk a little bit about that. Well, definitely, it was the brainchild of uh, Friends of Bronzeville, mm -hmm. along with several other stakeholders, Giselle's Art Studio, LAX, MKE, and Cupid, a division of Morris Development, uh, all people who are stakeholders within the Bronzeville area. There are several great things that go on throughout the summer, um, not just Bronzeville Week, but a lot of people don't necessarily affiliate it with, um, with Bronzeville. So it was a concerted effort this summer through all those partners together to make sure that people began to see this as all Bronzeville. Garfield Days is in Bronzeville. Mm -hmm. Juneteenth is in Bronzeville. Jazz in the Hood is in Bronzeville. But most people don't see it like that. They see the event separately. So it was our goal to kind of get people thinking about, hey, this is all Bronzeville. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was teasing you uh, when mm -hmm. we were off camera. I said, everything happens in your <laughs> district. Really, it does. So uh, let's talk about some of the other positive things that are actually taking place in your district. Uh, in April, it was announced that uh, Pete's Fruit Market would be opening a new store right there on the corner of North Avenue and King Drive. And uh, this didn't come along easily. Uh, it was a long fight to keep a vacant Walgreens from becoming a family dollar. And uh, you really spearheaded that fight. And tell all of our viewers why it was so important for that vacant building to become a grocery store and nothing else. Well, initially, when the owner purchased that building, what he proposed to the city was a grocery store. Mm -hmm. And he got funding from um, an entity affiliated with the city to help do that. That is what he promised to the city, and that is what he presented to the community. Along the lines, he changed it to a Dollar Tree. Um, and it is when those Dollar Tree signs went up um, and, and shelves began to be stocked that the community began to be up in arms about, hey, this isn't a grocery store, this mm -hmm. isn't what we were promised. And I began to question um, the owner as to what was uh, coming. So as a result, the community organized and I supported in that, in that organizing effort to demand what they deserve and demand what they were promised. Aside from the promise, though, we all know that there are areas of our community where there is um, a lack of access to mm -hmm. uh, healthy uh, foods and fruits and vegetables, which impacts health disparities and a whole bunch of other things. And this is one of those areas that had that lack of access. So just like we talked earlier about the need for density over in Bronzeville, those people who live there deserve somewhere to shop mm -hmm. um, and get access to healthy fresh fruits and vegetables. And you know, there are a few places with greater options of fresh fruits and vegetables right. in this city um, than Pete's Market. And I'm glad that they've decided um, to come to Bronzeville. Yeah, and I will make that correction. I've said a family dollar and it was a Dollar Tree. <laughs> Definitely right. two different things. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, not to mention uh, this particular market uh, has been developed by Vanguard Group with construction work handled by JCP Construction, which is a minority owned business enterprise. And this kind of puts me in the mind of really what Bronzeville is mm -hmm. all about. Just really recognizing the talents of African Americans and other minorities and putting them to use. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, the, the family that owns Pete's is a great family. The deal that has come together was worked through with the city departments, but it would not have been able to come to completion had it not been for the work of Kaylin Haywood, um, who runs Vanguard mm -hmm. Development Group. They are the developers of it. They have other projects in Brownsville and have uh, long seen the value of developing in Brownsville where others may not have. Mm -hmm. They always have. So them coupled with their choice of construction company, JCP, which has recently opened its headquarters on King Drive as well. Awesome. Um, the Phelps brothers who were raised in the district um, as well who see the value and who hire from the community and all of that great stuff. I think it's a great homage to the Bronzeville of old and a demonstration of what's possible uh, when we work to rebuild our own community. Yeah and uh, kaylin has been on this show and mm -hmm. talked about the importance of just really taking charge and being able to develop your own business and make a difference in the city where you live mm -hmm. and uh, we've also had Will Allen on to talk mm -hmm. about uh, the food deserts that exist so you also touched on that so mm -hmm. I think with all of the things that we talk about as issues in this city there are a lot of good things taking place right. and I'm just glad you're here to uh, shine some light on mm -hmm. the positive things that people can look forward to. Of course, uh, we've got primary election day coming up on Tuesday, August 9th, where voters will choose U.S. Senators, U.S. Representatives, all Wisconsin Assembly seats, all district attorneys, and even numbered state Senate seats. 
a lot of times people sleep on different elections thinking one's more important than the other. You're an elected official. Talk about the importance of this particular election and how it makes a difference in the lives of everyday people. Um, I think for those who question the necessity to vote, I always say, you know, there are laws that are made every day by, you know, congressmen, senators, and, and local people, uh, local elected officials that impact your life. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, do you want to have a say-so in who gets to make those choices as to what those laws are that are going to impact your life or not? Mm -hmm. I, for one, am always going to want to have some choice in who is making those laws. Um, so I think it's important that people research the candidates um, and their positions on issues that are of importance to them and that they turn out and vote. And not just vote themselves, but make sure their friends vote, make sure their family vote. Mm -hmm. On social media on election day, I always post a uh, fair warning. If you call me, text me, inbox me, <laughs> see me on the street, speak to me, I'm going to ask you if you voted. Because uh -huh. it's just that important um, to our communities, to our families, and to this nation. Um, if you're mad at the inability of things to get done, if you're mad at uh, things not moving forward the way they should, um, largely that's because of the stalemate that often exists at different levels of government because who sits there Absolutely. and we make those decisions as to who sit there you make the decision whether you cast your vote or not mm -hmm. now, when we so, talk about yeah. those Congress seats uh, people were talking about how Congress was not allowing the president to get anything done yeah. and that's a prime example as to how you do have some say so and how much can get done because right. the president needs Congress to be on his or her side and, forward. and uh, mm -hmm. yeah and if you don't have a say so or vote on this particular uh, scenario then you are a part of the yeah. problem uh, yeah exactly so um, one of the uh, many things that has been talked about and we've gone back and forth with this subject uh, the voter ID law recently a judge ruled that those without an ID will be able to vote in the November election by signing an affidavit saying why they don't have an ID what are your thoughts on that um, as far as uh, being able to sign an affidavit you know, I think it's a bit much, but um, that as opposed to the requirement of the ID, mm -hmm. I, I think voting should be as easy as possible. Yeah. Voting is, is, is a right. Uh, that people have and that people have fought and died for. Uh, so we, I helped with the fight against the voter ID bill and unfortunately it passed. And with this new, um, the judges finding this, it makes it a little easier mm -hmm. for those who truly have impediments um, to access to ID to still be able to vote. So for that, I think it's a good thing. But in general, I don't think people should have to <laughs> file IDs, I mean, do affidavits or any of that um, to be able to vote. Okay, and quickly I wanted to mention your efforts in helping Milwaukee's young people. Uh, every year you host Girls Day at City Hall and uh, anybody that has seen the photos or actually <laughs> seen it in person, it's a chill bump effect because mm -hmm. you have young ladies of certain age group who are able to spend the day at City Hall, get a better understanding of what you do, what other women there do, and people in general who work for the people. Yeah. Talk about that. Uh, six years ago, myself and several great women um, at City Hall, because mm -hmm. um, for eight years I was the only woman there out of 15, mm -hmm. um, tried to think about how we could get young women to begin to think about the potential of serving in public office um, and or public service careers. So we came up with the concept of Girls Day um, at City Hall. It grew from the first year being 38 girls to now we average a little less than 200 girls wow. um, every year. And they get exposed to female elected officials and female female public servants and they also go through some leadership development workshops and the whole goal is to really get young ladies to think about uh, what they can do to contribute to help make the city um, and this nation better um, and potentially careers in public service and running for office. All right and uh, for people who are wondering how they can get their young ladies involved uh, what would you suggest they do for the future? Uh, give our office a call 414-286 um, 
2994. All right, and finally, uh, you've got the 8th Annual Freedom Scholarship Essay, and the deadline's coming up quickly, August 5th, giving out two $500 scholarships, which is major in this day and age. Any amount of money to uh, further your education is important. Talk about that. You know, I had the pleasure and honor of going to Fisk University for my undergraduate degree in business mm -hmm. and English. It would not have been possible, given my mother's working three jobs just to keep the lights mm -hmm. on. So it would not have been possible for me to obtain that degree or my law degree for that matter from UW Madison had it not been for scholarships and monies that were made available. So I made a commitment then when I completed that once given the opportunity, I would um, find a way to help give back to others, to give them the same opportunity to have access to education. And I know that the greatest gap you usually is right before you need to go. Mm -hmm. And it's usually your ability to pay for books, your ability to pay for travel, or some small amount. Mm -hmm. um, so so I started with these two $500 um, scholarships. And you know the great students who have gotten these um, so far have gone on to do some great things. And I love the ability to contribute to their educational journey. And I leave them with the same thing I started with, which was when you have the opportunity, all I ask is that you do the same for others. The application is available on the web at milwaukee.gov backslash district six. The deadline um, is August 5th, and all people have to do is a thousand word um, essay about um, uh, freedom. About freedom. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for coming by. I appreciate your time, and it's always great talking Thank to you. you. <laughs> Alderwoman Malele Cog, she represents Milwaukee's 6th District, and don't forget the fourth annual Bronzeville Week will be celebrated August 6th through the 13th with the Bronzeville Cultural and Arts Festival happening on August 6th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Go to milwaukee.gov slash Bronzeville for all those details. When we return to Our Issues Milwaukee, we'll focus on your health and find out more about the third annual your fellas man up 5k walk which is also taking place in the sixth district we'll talk about that right after this <laughs> 